and I, who was then the acting, um, she was the managing director of the, of the whole institute, we decided where are we sort of leaving um, energy on the table? Who are we forgetting in this Sundance Institute, um, you know, filmmakers and composers for film and theater? Something's missing in this that's going to complete the circle of what we all do and what we believe in. And that was where the independent spirit lived all year. And when we thought about it, we realized that that was really in the art houses of America, those ones that we all went to, the ones that were dying, a lot of them closing. And we thought, well, let's just, we don't know anything about that business, like nothing. And but let's see if we can just gather them here at the festival. And that was 10 years ago. We called it the Art House Project. And Russ Collins, who is here, was one of those that, that helped me gather the people. And we did it for a couple of years. We gathered, and we realized that a lot of people hadn't even met before. And they were, you know, they had funny energy. They were really spirited, <laughs> but not necessarily talking to each other. They all had their little things that they did, but we really realized that there's a power in them joining together. And we sort of kicked that back to them. We go, I'm not going to do this for you. You guys have to do this for yourselves. And they started something that's magical called the Art House Convergence. It's been going since then. It's an amazing conference that happened before this festival. It started off small, it started off American, and has gone to this whole international realm. There's over 500 people that come from all over the world to this. And I think that is worth celebrating, 10 years of that. Woo! I want to thank all these founding theaters. They become our friends, and it is truly the place where our independent spirit really takes our spirit and mingles it and makes it much bigger than we all are together. I want to say a few words about uh, Sundance Collection at UCLA and, and why what is happening here today is more than just a screening of Paris is Burning. Um, the situation for safeguarding films, particularly celluloid material, is uh, totally dire, and that is not an overdramatic assessment. Um, labs are closing, libraries are changing hands, and in my experience, about half of the producers and filmmakers, uh, if you ask them, could not tell you where their material is. So <clears throat> when we say, what does all this mean, uh, I often think of, if you think of a montage reel of your favorite moments in independent film with a really pretty soundtrack, and it makes you feel good, and then you see about half of those images fade, that's what's happening. So the, film, the uh, Sundance Collection is really our effort to safeguard those works, and um, we, we spend a lot of time reaching out to filmmakers and producers to ask them where their material is and to try to get it into an archive. That's exactly what we did with Jenny a few years ago. Um, as a result, we have the negative for Paris is Burning in the UCLA Film and Television Archive. happily in very good condition, but when we thought about what we were going to screen today, um, you know, Jenny shot this film in 16mm, uh, when it was released on 35, obviously that means that there was cropping of the image, so uh, in the digital restoration that you're going to see today, you're going to see it, um, this is a digital master remaster that was made from the original 16mm IP and therefore has that original aspect ratio. And that is uh, the first time it has been seen on screens for about 25 years. There are a lot of people to thank for that. First and foremost, uh, UCLA Film and Television Archive, uh, who is our partner in film preservation now for 15 years. Uh, and they supervise this preservation process. The, UCLA, the Outfest UCLA Legacy Project, uh, who, who very much share in our mission of preserving these films, um, and, and particularly Paris is Burning. They've been working for quite some time on uh, some of the outtakes as well, and this was a joint project with them. Uh, the restoration was made uh, possible also in part from Arcus Foundation, who are here this afternoon. I want to thank uh, Modern Film and Video, the fabulous lab that created the Digital Master. Uh, they also did that with Hoop Dreams, which we showed last year, and Dolby, who made the DCP. Uh, always uh, thank you also Miramax, who have always been supportive in our archive efforts. Uh, and last but not least, I want to thank Jenny herself, uh, who actually not only was so enthusiastic for this project, but uh, literally flew out to Los Angeles 
uh, earlier this month to supervise the final timing of this. So um, preservation of these films does not happen uh, without the help and support of a lot of people. Please give a round of applause for all of them. I went to this thing that was called IFP Market, which is this free-for-all of independent <laughs> people coming together at the Angelica Center. Um, it was pretty organized. Um, but what we really did there was see a lot of films for the first time. I, I think probably because I was the only gay employee then, they shoved me into this screening. Um, <laughs> I did sit with Alberto Garcia, though, who was then the director. And they said... Um, you know, what do you think? And I really thought at that moment, if seeing this film, if my job was going to be like this the rest of my time here, it would be amazing. And this is amazing. Thank you. 